Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Before I begin the conversation with our guest, a little bit about Kisan Hub. Uh, Kisan Hub is a produce management tool. Our software platform covers the journey of the produce right from the planting to harvesting and until the produce arrives at the pack house or the factory. It provides full visibility of your crops, improving management decisions and ensuring that on spec produce gets to the right customer at the right time whilst reducing waste, reducing costs and improving your margins. William is the chairman of the Burgess Farms Produce World Group. William, you need no introduction. I remember you saying, I like making things happen rather than looking backwards. Could I ask you to say a few words about yourself? Uh, hi Sachin, thank you. Um, so Burgess Farms Produce World is a business that goes right back to my great grandfather, started in 1898. The business basically has reinvented itself many times in those uh, 120 odd years. So really our business, we, we've been farming and uh, marketing our own produce for all of that time. The market's changed uh, and we've had to change with it. I think um, most of the listeners will know that fresh produce is uh, very dynamic. You have to be very fleet of foot. You have to make fast decisions. Um, things change, the, the weather, supply, demand. Um, I think the biggest skill is trying to match supply and demand. Um, when you plan your crop, you don't really know what demand's going to do. You know, you're, you're making lots of judgment calls, estimations about demand and supply. So, and if, if the two go the wrong way, then you have a supply gap and you're short. If the two go the other way, you have a glut. My background, I joined the business in uh, 1995, I think it was. Um, I trained as a chartered accountant, um, having finished my education, didn't really know what I wanted to do. I was good at numbers. I was always interested in business and agriculture. And my father encouraged me to do it. The first two years working for Thomas May, Peterborough and Leicester, one of the key things it taught me is um, you need good information, good data to run a business well. Um, so I think one of the, the strengths of our business is we are good at, um, I think we've got good management information. In fact, we've got a non-exec director joined us a couple of years ago. Jeff Calder, who'd been at McCain's and, and G's. Um, and he often still says to this day, we've got one of the best um, management information packs he's ever seen. We have, we've, we've put a lot of investment in, into that with um, Linkfresh, um, Microsoft and Vision, um, and other systems, Kiss and Hub, that I'll come to. But uh, yeah, we've put a lot of investment in, but it is, I think paying off for us um, and we did quite a lot of uh, M&A mergers. We merged with Sutton Bridge which was a cooperative of potato farmers um, and we merged with um, Whitworth Onion Growers which was a cooperative on onion farmers um, and we also merged with Eyes and Carrots which was a, a commercial carrot business owned by the Tomsits. Um, a, a lot of transformation over yeah. the uh, so we did we did that which gave us a more scale and a better position in the market i suppose our main goal is always to try and survive and thrive in a in a very dynamic market with thin margins and yeah and, and this is where you know it's a, a 122 years old business uh, and what i liked you said was really that uh, innovation and reinventing the business over the years to take it to the shape which is it today. You also mentioned about data-driven decisions and having management information packs driven by some of the software systems uh, backing it. And that innovation is pretty much the theme of today's chat. So let, let's start with that uh, innovation point, um, uh, William. What do you believe will be the big trends in innovation for the UK fresh produce industry? Specific to technology over the next five years, 
And how will this drive change in the operating model of the business? Because you did mention just now that you know, the operating margins are thin, right? So especially, how do we use innovation, especially tech, to really kind of improve our business margins? Uh, it's a massive subject. I mean, there's loads of examples of innovation um, and technology in agriculture and, and produce. If we start at the, the field end of things, I think there's a lot of... Um, a lot of stuff, exciting stuff with drones and, and um, precision farming where you can target your um, pesticides or fertilizers to exactly where it's needed, reducing the cost, but also having environmental benefits. A big part of our business is organic farming. We learn a lot about um, farming without pesticides through that. Yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff where fast, computer processes and, and access to data can open the world up. I think, I think 5G is going to be a big uh, step change, the speed of that and the fact that it will eventually you'll be able to use it anywhere um, out in the field and, and farm machinery can be connected up to the, to the web and the data from that can be used. So I think big data in agriculture is is going to be a, a big thing in the next five ten years i think we've there's lots of systems of data so we've got link fresh which is from the sort of back door to the customer um, we have different systems in the field um, i think it's how you join all that up so that you get real traceability and i mean my, i have this vision that one day and i don't think we're far off it a customer will be able to scan a product in the supermarket and they'll be able to see where it came from. They'll be able to meet the farmer, see the whole supply chain. I think supply chains will become much more um, visible, much more transparent. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that'd be a good thing. This is where we also feel like you know, uh, technology can play a role in connecting those farmers, connecting the supply chain. And most importantly, giving that visibility to the end customers, but at the same time, using the technologies like big data, 5G, in optimizing some of the business processes uh, and integrating a number of different applications like farm, farm recording software, as you mentioned, or farming yeah. equipment and bring that same data on the same platform. Uh, and, and probably you know, that's, that's, that's where we start talking about digitization uh, and you know, converting and integrating this number of different systems. So how has technology helped your business with monitoring crops, uh, storage quality, and what further developments do you foresee in the next few years within that digitization uh, space? I think there's, I mean, Kiss and Hub system, which we've got, which we're using is um, an example where you're taking photos of the, of the foliage and, and, and that's using that data to see how the crop's growing and forecast the yields and things like that. I think there'll be other things using drones and satellite images to do similar things. The, this, this problem with supply and demand is a big one in fresh produce. It's, you know, there's always either too much or not enough. Um, and it's obviously a big issue now with food waste. So I think being able to try and forecast better so you've got longer to deal with any foreseen um, surpluses or foreseen shortages um, I think will will actually take a lot of cost out because wasted product is a huge cost and, and and not only that it's an environmental thing so I think systems that that predict that help you predict what's going to happen and and hopefully we'll get better at predicting the weather as well yeah absolutely and I also feel like you know uh, that horizontal scalability or connectivity and integration is going to be key thing uh, because we always talk about different standards, but ultimately, uh, I think as a as a tech company, as an industry, we'll have to come with standards so that there is a seamless exchange of data between uh, between different systems. And you mentioned some key things there, where you know matching the supply and demand, understanding the the yield uh, and the uh, and the quality of the yield, and reducing the wastage. And this is something you know which we we have very close to our own system in terms of giving you that visibility but also making sure that you know the wastage in the supply chain is reduced and that way we can improve the margins 
William, you spoke about your uh, end consumer side, right? and you said one day there will be a system where you know a consumer can scan the product and they will get to see everything about the product, right? Not just where it is grown, which who was a farmer built, so what what was done with it, right? And that kind of traceability area uh, is something you know which we've been working closely with uh, your business. So we recently launched a new feature uh, called paperless load tickets. How have you felt this has helped improve the management of product traceability within your business? And what do you think the key benefits have been uh, within that? Trying to reduce paperwork and trying to streamline all the administration of these things. So the the good thing about the the load passports, we call them, is um, we get all the data that we need um, comes with with the passport it's making sure we've got all that data without loads of manual processes, which is manual processes are not only costly, but they lead to mistakes. Data gets input wrongly. You know, that's, that's my other vision. I think we're quite close in the pack house is to be totally paperless, capture data at source, um, capture it once, and then use that data for all the different things you need it for. So, I think it is helping. I think storage quality, I think there's still some work to do on that. But what we really lack at the moment is we we can produce good quality crops in and, and then we can produce some less good crops. It's it's trying to use the data to understand why that field yielded really well and produced good quality and, and another field didn't. And and trying to understand why was it temperature, was it disease was it the seed i think with technology we can now collect all that data temperature rainfall we can analyze the soil there's some good tech i think coming on soil soil health but the load passport thing i think is one step in that uh, and a good step and then it's trying to push right back to the farmer farmers hate paperwork as much as we all do i think trying to get a system that works on your mobile phone um, yeah. And it's easy and quick is the key to making this successful. Absolutely. And this is where, you know, when we started building uh, paperless load tickets or load passports first, it were, the idea was like, yeah, make it paperless. So there's no paper in the system because it does create delays, uh, manual work. It effectively, you, know, you don't get that end-to-end, end-to-end connectivity for the, for the traceability reason. And in terms of uh, sustainability, I know you, you've been, I know in our last discussion, you spoke quite a lot in terms of understanding uh, the, the sustainability. What role do you think digital technology plays in achieving those sustainability goals? Well, how do I define sustainability? It's, it's, it's having a business process, a production process that is financially sustainable and environmentally sustainable um, for the long term. And in fresh produce with fine margins, you know, competitive marketplace, really understanding your costs, you know, uh, right down to field level is, is, is very important. Environmental, I mean, I think there's a big challenge, obviously, on environmental carbon footprint. Um, I, think, I think technology could help us understand carbon footprint better and help us deal with it. Water is the other big thing i think in the east of england um well in the uk generally it's becoming it is going to become a big challenge as we go forwards um yeah. and um we've either got too much or not enough so i think we need much more water capture uh, and again better forecasting so you know when you're likely to need it plastic's a big challenge for our sector you know the dinner party conversations are always why do you why do you put everything in plastic bags? And actually, we, the industry is trying like hell to get away from that, but it's difficult. The alternatives are expensive. They may have carbon footprint challenges that um, make them worse than plastic. Um, and, the, and then the shelf life and storing the products, if you don't get that right, then you have more food waste, which is also bad for the environment. No, that's great. And good to hear that, you know, um, sustainability encompasses both financial as well as uh, environmental sustainability there. 
So, uh, William, let's move on. Uh, so far, we covered innovation uh, that neatly kind of went to dig digitization of the businesses, traceability of the produce, and the overall sustainability of the business and the, and the sector. So a slightly different question. What has been your biggest surprise working in the industry this year? And how do you summarize this year in one word? Which one first? I'll do the last one first. Okay. COVID. <laughs> COVID. Um, the surprise has been, I mean, obviously COVID, no one saw that coming. And um, so I think the biggest surprise I've had is how resilient the supply chain's been, how well it's all worked. Um, it's amazing, you know, we, we've had a lot of people working from home and it's amazing how actually that's not been so bad. It's worked fairly well. Um, but what's also amazed me is the people working in the farms and the pack houses have carried on as normal. You know, there's, there's not been a shortage of food. So the supply yeah. chain's been amazing, very resilient. And um, I think uh, credit to the industry. Thank you very much to you, your team, uh, and businesses like US William, who has actually kept the food supply chains running. Uh, people often don't realize how much effort and what process goes in to deliver that fresh produce or a food product on the supermarket shelf. Do you think that Kisana platform has helped during pandemic by not being able to travel to farms, etc.? Oh, yes, definitely. Um, I mean, I think if yeah, systems like that, like this and have been very helpful. Um, you know, if we didn't have technology like we're using right now, um, you know, I don't know how how we'd have we'd have fared in this, this situation. I think there would have been a lot more problems in the food supply chain. That's yeah. that's good to hear. And you know, so I'd just like to kind of wrap up the the conversation. So as we heard, you know. Burgess Farm Produce World, 122 year old business, and they have innovated, reinnovated in uh, multiple times to come to the current stage. But what's fascinating to hear is like how how the the rich heritage of the business then is kind of married with the digital technologies and uh, the systems which you have put in place, William, for your team, so that you can run your business uh, effectively. Thank you very much for joining this conversation. It has been absolutely fascinating to hear your thoughts on technology, your thoughts on innovation, sustainability, uh, addressability, and uh, digitization. I would like to thank our uh, audience as well. Uh, and you know, thank you very much for your time. And we look forward to seeing you in, uh, in December uh, again for our uh, next webinar. So thank you, William. Thank you all and speak soon. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Bye.